to how to Yu-Gi-Oh! deck profile Sisters of Utopia. So this deck is about, you know, family. It's about sisters. Yeah, so bear that um, in mind. Anyway, so I hope you'll enjoy this deck profile. This is a fun deck. Uh, it's not going to have a side deck. A fun deck that I will have, that I'll put on my channel, won't have side decks because I don't see the need for fun decks to have side decks. They're not going to be going to the competitive scene. They're not strong enough and I don't class them as decks that I'm going to be taking, you know, to, to win YCSs or stuff like that. These are purely fun decks if you play at your locals, play to have fun. That's what they're about. So if a deck doesn't have a side deck on my channel, it probably means it's a fun deck and it's not to be taken seriously um, in the competitive side. But just to have a laugh and have a good time. And sometimes that's what you need. Sometimes you just need some decks. Just go out there and just have a good time. So let's get to the rest of the video. Okay, so we're going to talk about Gagaga -ga -ga Magician. That name, though. Makes me feel ashamed. Gagaga -ga -ga Magician is a level 4 spellcaster. And this is a card that you're going to be using to be making your rank 4 plays. So you're going to be searching it with the spell card known as, if we put it in front of you, Anomatopyra. That's really convenient. And the searcher for Anomatopyra will be, if we put it in front of you, Anomatopicup. That is the card you're going to be using to be searching Gagaga -ga -ga Magician. Obviously by discarding a card and usually the card you're going to be discarding is going to be either Exorcist uh, Stella Or Exorcist uh, Ellis Talk about a two-way twister it could be any other one of the other cards that you discard but it doesn't really matter at this point is you're going to be using uh, those cards to go into uh, rank 4 XYZ summon, which is more than likely going to be number 39, Utopia. When nothing ruins the game plan. And so, that's about it really. Just remember that it's all about consistency with this deck. Did someone say perfect consistency? To Baba Bancho Gagaga -ga -ga Coat. So I played two of it. Two is the best number for this job. Find two is the perfect ratio for Sisters of Utopia. Apart from that, oh, uh, remember that we can add this card with Anomatopyra, and Anomatopyra can be searched with Anomato Pickup. So again, like before, it adds that consistency to the deck, and you know the discard targets, as I'll show once again, which should be Exorcist Ellis. <laughs> Taking up the family tree with sibling synchronicity Or Exorcist Stella Never knew how much I missed ya So with that in mind, you're definitely looking to a card that increases that consistency That we have again in Sisters of Utopia And this is one thing I want to stress about this deck It's very, very consistent you know, again, as I say, we've got a 100% consistency rate with this deck. Did someone say perfect consistency? You're more than likely going to be making a rank 4 play, which is going to be, you know, Utopia again. Just hammer that home. Um, leaving that aside, as a, you know, you're going to be weak to hand traps. And this is one of the weak uh, weaknesses of this deck, a very big weakness. It is a fun deck. It is a, a anime deck. You just play for fun. So you're going to be weak to those hand traps. Okay, and that's about it. Our Lord and Savior, Astraltopia. So this is the magic card. What do you want? I will give it to you. Magic source, right? This is a card that can basically add whatever you want. Balance is made to be broken. In Sisters of Utopia. Do you want a rank up? It does it for you. Do you want a uh, monster? It does it for you. Do you want uh, an Omni Negate? It does it for you. So it doesn't matter what you want. 
you can get it with this card. And another thing about this card that's absolutely nutty and crazy is that it can special summon itself when you control an XYZ. You need to calm down with that. Like, what the hell is that? That is just absolutely broken. That is just so, so good. So definitely one of your key cards in this deck. Three is just right. Um, that you really need to be aware of. Yeah, so that's about it, really. Let's go with our next three of... Three is just right. Which is Astral Karibo. This is a card you play at three. You play at three or you go home. There is no wrong answer. Every answer is the correct answer. Um, it's a great card. Again, boost that consistency in your deck. Did someone say perfect consistency? So, with the way you play Sisters of Utopia, you're most often than likely not going to be breaking. Perfect hands are the norm, not the exception. Um, the bricks just don't happen. We Perfect in every way. Exactly. That's the kind of hands you get with Astral, uh, with um, Sisters of Utopia. But leaving that aside, let's look at its effect. So, you reveal uh, a number monster. So, let's just showcase there. And then you just, it just becomes that uh, level. So the rank, as we see there, is f four. So it becomes a level four. That's really convenient. Monster, you can easily go into a level four XYZ summon. And with the effect of Astral Karibo, obviously, it means that you're locked to XYZ summoning for the rest of the turn when you use its effect. That's not really a restriction, as the only thing you're going to be doing in this deck is XYZ summoning. So the restriction that it has not really one because that's the only thing you're going to be doing anyway one of our key cards is again in the deck zs ascended sage so zs ascended sage is really that anime card that anime top deck that can bring you back perfect in every way not only is it a great card for to going first but you can basically have it at any time and at any turn it's value is always great no matter what turn you have it. It can definitely bring you back into the game. That's really convenient. Definitely resuscitate you from death. Um, leaving the fact aside that if it's used for an XYZ summon of a U Utopia XYZ monster that you can just add any rank up from your deck to your hand. The truth you need to know. On summon of an XYZ, of an XYZ Utopia monster is just great fantastic not much is to be said about that also the other fact that it can special summon itself if you control no cards so great for when you're going second guarantees that you have an xyz summon goblindaberg so goblindaberg again is there to give you that additional summon so that you guessed it you can go into an easy rank four xyz summon again, that's really convenient Again, that is the purpose of this deck. The purpose of everything is to get yourself into an, to the XYZ territory. So your extra deck is your toolbox. It is the way you need to go. Not much we can say about Godbrindaberg really as it just facilitates your extra deck. A monsters. Okay, let's leave it there. For first exorcist monster that we play in this deck, we play it at three. Three is just right. Exorcist Stella. Now that everybody knows, I ain't never gonna let you go. Oh, 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 oh. Go, oh. So how do Exorcists work? Well, they basically their effects are related to the graveyard. Why does everything you do relate to death? Yeah, it's quite morbid, actually, when you think about it. So anyways, um, their effects are stated, as it says on the card, is that if any card is moved from either player's graveyard by your opponent, you immediately go into an XYZ summon. From death comes your birth. So what are the monsters you're going to be going into? Uh, most than likely, you're going to be going into this bad boy lady here, Exorcista Cass Patel. Um, this is a card you're going to be going into as when you XYZ summon it on your opponent's turn um your put your opponent cannot special summon monsters from the graveyard and that is an effect that's going to be happening most of the time 
Uh, one of the cards that you're really going to go into most of the time, considering how Yu-Gi-Oh is, is this card right here, Exorcista Asophil. This is your lady. She is your girl. She is your... <laughs> That's right, she's the girl that you're really going to be going into most of the time um, with Exorcistas, Stella, or with any other Exorcista on the field. Move that aside. Um, the other Exorcistas that are available for you to go into are Exorcista Kibrim. And that's about it. Okay, let's go over to our next Exorcista monster. Exorcista Ellis. <laughs> So, this is a card again you're going to be using to be going into XYZ summons on your opponent's turn. And as you guessed it, it is a card related to death. Why does everything you do relate to death? What is with Exorcistas and just dying and morbid stuff like the graveyard? Anyways, leaving the morbidity of Exorcistas effects aside, it's going to be your card that you're going to want to be going to most of the time. And, you know, it can special summon itself. If you control an Exorcist monster, which is an effect that you're going to be using 90% of the time, it's going to come up quite a lot, and it's going to help you going into those quick XYZ summons. So, yeah, for sure, pay attention to this card as its effect is going to be, it's going to be coming off, coming out most of the time, or not all the time, but you get the general idea. And here you go, we have our spell card, XYZ Change Tactics. This is a card that is going to be a facilitator for a lot of things. As its effect states, when you XYZ summon a Utopia monster, you just get to draw a card. So, so we just drew something for no reason. How are you going to add it? You're going to add it with the help of our Lord and Savior, Astraltopia, right? There are no limits to the power of this card. Pay attention to Astraltopia, as I'll be mentioning it quite a lot in the spell and trap section of this video. Put it away. But yeah, so, XYZ change tactics, draw cards for days, not much can be said. You play it at two. At two is the best number for this job. And so we have our next three of... Three is just right. Zexu Construction. Zexu Construction is a normal spell with the following effect. Like... Flipping out. When we look at this card and look at it in more detail, it just basically says you just win the game. Like, you need to calm down with that. What is this card? This card is absolutely nuts. If it was in any other archetype or any other deck, it'd be absolutely broken. It'd be banned straight away. There's too much that it does for a card. But definitely for a Utopia deck, it is absolutely mandatory. You play a you play three copies of it or you go home. There is no debate here. There is no discussion. End of. It is such a powerful card in this deck. It cannot be understated that much. It's just great card and power card overall. Perfect in every way. And here we have our only traps that we play in Sisters of Utopia. Numbers Protection. So Numbers Protection is a counter trap that can be added with our Lord and Savior. You know and love him. Yes, Astrotopia is back, people. There are no limits to the power of this card. And leaving um, our Lord and Savior aside, which is Astrotopia, um, it's an Omni Negate that can only be activated if you control a number monster. That's really convenient. And which you can search with Astrotopia. Not much can be said about this card. It's a two of at best. Two is the best number for this job. Generally, in this deck, you don't want to play three of it because you're really very consistent. Like, consistency is this deck's middle name. Did someone say perfect consistency? You don't really break. Like, it's one of these decks that is hardly going to break. The reason why you're going to lose with Sisters of Utopia is not because you bricked, is because you couldn't deal with hand traps. Facts. Okay, and now we'll go to these two cards as that are part of Sisters of Utopia, Monster Reborn and Reinforcement of the Army. So Monster Reborn is there so that you can just revive any monster from your graveyard to go to a quick XYZ summon. And Reinforcement of the Army is there to add our Lord and Savior, which is, as you know, 
Astrotopia. There are no limits to the power of this card. Um, it can also add the Goblindaberg and can add as well our ZS Ascended Sage. That's really convenient. And we have a three of... Three is just right. Anomatopyra. So let's uh, just look at that effect. So Anomatopyra has a big search target. So we can add uh, Tsubaba. Gagaga. Ga, ga. Go, go, go. And Dodo Monster. What's with these names? Naming sense is completely out the window. Those are the four types of monsters that we can add and we can just showcase them there again for you to see okay and so when you've done that you get to discard a card so obviously in its activation so you'll discard mostly in your hand you should discard an exorcist or monster um if not you'll discard any other dead card that you'll have in your hand to add one of those copies from your deck to your hand. And that's about it, really. And here we have our two of. Two is the best number for this job. So here we have Onomato Pickup. Onomato Pickup is going to allow you to search Onomato Pyra. That's really convenient. Apart from that, like, that's all it's there for. It's there to just boost, uh, you know, Sisters of Utopia's consistency and just to make it so that you're not going to brick as much. With all these cards you have in Sisters of Utopia, your chances of bricking are practically zero. They're non-existent. The cans are the norm, not the exception. 99% of the time, you're gonna be able to make a rank four on your first turn, all the time, every time. There is that 1% chance of breaking as with all uh, decks have when they have a perfect consistency they usually will have that one percent chance of breaking but uh so this is the last three of in the main deck which is exosister packs so exosister packs during the main phase you pay 800 life points and add one exosister card from your deck to your hand except exosister packs family is important even if you have to pay for it a monster by its effect you can special summon it if the other exosister monster mentioned on it is in is on your field or in your graveyard you can only activate one exosister packs once per turn so this is uh the spell card that's going to unleash your exorcist, your exorcist aside in Sisters of Utopia. This is what you're going to be using to add either your exorcist Stella or exorcist Ellis from your deck to your hand by targeting uh, one of the copies that are in your graveyard, which you should have discarded there with Anomatopyra, which I mentioned um, in earlier in this video. And that's really just about it. It's a great three of yeah so let's move on to our next card okay and here we have our two of two is the best number for this job hyper rank up magic utaba force so this is the two of that we have in our deck so this is a card again that you're going to be able to search with zs ascended sage the other card that can search it as well will be Zexel Construction. So those are the two cards that are able to search Hyper Rank Up Utaba Force. Also, the other card that will help you get um, Hyper Rank Up Magic Utaba Force is our Lord and Savior, you know and love him, Astraltopia. There are no limits to the power of this card. Yes. That's pretty much it. And with that, I think feel we've I've covered the entire main deck of Sisters of Utopia is our ace monster, number 39, Utopia. Can do no wrong. So this is your card that you're going to be summoning most of the time at turn one. Fantastic card. Not much can be said about Utopia. It's a three of that you just, it's mandatory we play it in Sisters of Utopia. Okay, let's move on. Alrighty then, and here we have our next series of Utopia Monsters. We have number S39, Utopia Prime, number 
C39, Utopia Ray. Number S39, Utopia the Lightning. These are cards you're going to be making on top, ranking up on top of Utopia, which are pretty easy to make, mind you, to get yourself extra draws with XYZ change tactics. Ranking up can be fun when you do it right. That was shown earlier in the main deck part of this video. Apart from that, um, number S39 Utopia Lightning is going to be great to be going through game as you're going to be able to attack your, po uh, your opponent during the battle phase. They can't activate any effects during the battle phase and you're going to be able to increase your attack points by another 2500, giving it a total attack value of 5000 points. It's free real estate. Fantastic card right there. Okay, let's move on to the next cards in our extra deck. Exorcista Gibrin to our far left. So this card doesn't have any effect on summon. But um, what it does have is a quick effect. So when you make it, you're, you can target an effect monster you put a controls and negate its effect. Also, Now that everybody knows Since you'll activate the effect by detaching an XYZ material, as soon as that effect is activated, all XYZ monsters on the field will get an additional 800 attack points. That's really convenient. Basically, activating an effect gives you an attack point boost of 800. So it's going to really be at um, 2400 or something like that. Plus, yeah, 2400. So it's quite beefy girl when she gets her boost on and negates an effect. And so we have the center card there, Exorcista Caspitel. So Exorcista Caspitel is where things get really interesting. Again, this is a card that can be summoned easily with via the effects of Exorcista Stella or Exorcista Ellis. So its effect on summon is that when it is XYZ summoned, neither player can special summon monsters from the graveyard. <laughs> Synchronicity. Well, this special summoning monster from Graven is going to be happening the moment this card is XYZ summoned. That is fantastic right there. So it's definitely a card that's going to be useful, especially when you summon it on your opponent's turn with the help of Exorcist uh, Ellis or Exorcist Stella. And finally, we have our MVP, the card that you're going to want to summon 90% of the time, the card that's going to steal you games and going to really... Um, screw your opponent over. And that card is Exorcista Asophil to our far right. That's your girl with the bow that definitely seals the deal. Now that everybody knows, I ain't never gonna let you go. Oh, 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 So what's her effect? When she's XYZ summoned, neither player can activate card effects in the graveyard this turn. That effect is so so powerful and would definitely come into play with her when she hits the board so bear that in mind and we have these two lovely monsters number 99 utopia dragonor this is a perfect two of in sisters of utopia two is the best number for this job as if we can see its effect right um First of all, I want to tell you a little fun fact about this card. This is the third XYZ monster in the game that can activate its effect without detaching. I'm getting emotional. The first monster in the game is Aegon C. Kaistrom. That's the first monster that got released in Yu-Gi-Oh! that can activate its effect without detaching uh, material. The second monster is number 29, Mannequin Cap. And finally, this is the third monster right here, which is number 99, Utopia Dragonor. So that's a fun fact for you to know. So what is its actual effect? So its non-detach effect, the effect that you, you that's used for not, that doesn't need to detach, is it can change uh, an opponent's monster's attack to zero. So, but its actual detach effect is detach two XYZ materials in order to special summon any number monster between 1 and 100. So yeah, between 1 and 100. Pretty massive jump there in just summoning any number monster.
that you need. Okay there. And so these are the monsters you're going to be summoning off of number 99, Utopia Dragonor, as you can see in front of you. So one of them will be number 90, Galaxy Eyes Photon Lord. You're going to summon this for your Monster Negate. And number 38, Hope Harbringer, Dragon Titanic Galaxy, you're going to be summoning this for your Spell Negate. Uh, that's all really there is to it. You just summon them for their spell and monster negate respectively. And that's really about it, really. There's there's not much I can say about that. Let's get to the Exorcist the part of our extra deck. Our last card in the deck of Exorcist Sisters of Utopia, sorry. And this is our two of Exorcista Michaelis. Two is the best number for this job. Exorcista Michaelis, this is the card that you're going to be using to add yourself our, our ski spell Exorcista packs. So what is its effect? Is that um, once per turn you can if uh, you can add one Exorcist spell or trap from your deck to your hand. And what is its quick? So it has a quick effect as well. Is that I can you can target one card your opponent controls or in their graveyard and banish it. Um, so it's pretty nice. It's a pretty nice removal there. But you're basically mainly going to be using it for that adding of the Exorcist uh, packs and for other things. The removal that it does have is pretty useful, especially if you make it on your opponent's turn. Great interruption there. Quite fantastic. But most of the time, you're going to be making it on your own turn to add yourself extra packs to set yourself up. That's really what it's there for. And with that, I think I've covered everything there is about Sisters of Utopia. We come to the end of this video. So, as I like to say, you are one step closer to becoming a Yu-Gi-Oh! Master. My faith, right, is in your hands.